Good morning, welcome, or good evening. We're so glad you're joining us today. We here at Shepherd's Grove believe in you and we want you to come and worship with us here. Bring your kids, we'll teach them the things of God. We wanna connect with you. And uh, so come on down if you live in this area, I'd love to shake your hand. One thing we do every single week is we say this creed of the beloved. We align our identities with the word of God. So would you hold your hands out like this as a sign of receiving and say this with me. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I'm the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks, you can be seated. Today's sermon, I think of all the sermons I'm gonna give, is gonna be the most important of like 18 I'm giving in this series. And in fact, many of the other sermons I'm going to be given are just reinforcing what I'm gonna talk about today. And that is simply this. Your greatest human need is to bond with others. Very often I'll say the greatest human need is dignity and that's what I mean when I say that. If we don't walk in dignity, we very often find ourselves wrapped up in a lie, withdrawing, and, and everything you do that's unhealthy, almost everything, is coming from your unmet ability to bond deeply with others. This is not only Christianity, this is psychology. It's actually been proved that your greatest need is to find some sense of deep connectivity. And that's not just in your romantic relationships, but in your friendships, bonding with your kids, your parents, even some of your colleagues at work. To have relationships in life in which you feel deeply connected. In other words, your greatest need is, is to connect deeply with others. And many of us, we live every day exhausted and we think it's because of our job or we think it's because of, sometimes it is, but we think it's just because of our health issue or we're getting older or, or, or things aren't, just aren't the way they used to be or whatever. And what we don't recognize is that much of our total lack of energy is coming from a place where we're not bonding deeply with other people. Reverse that, the most joyful, courageous, uh, Jesus-like people are the ones who are able to connect deeply with God and in particular connect deeply with other people and have embraced their imperfections. You know, they don't love it, but they're okay with where they are and they're trusting those things to God and just being honest and real and connecting deeply with it. Those are the people who have the most energy and the most joy and you're that type of person. God is teaching you to let go of having to prove yourself, to find your identity in grace, not in works. And you're learning to reach out and you're learning to show your true self to your friends and your family. And you're trusting that you really are wanted by them. You are. You are. People want the real you. God wants the real you. I want the real you. And so do people. Very often, many of us, we have lots of friends. Maybe you're in a big family. And yet, in the midst of that, it's easy to feel out of energy or even lonely. How can I have lots of friends and a big family and still feel lonely? I've felt that much of my life until I learned how to connect deeply with others. And we're gonna talk about that today. Janis Joplin was once asked, what's it like being a rock star? And she said, it's like making love to 10,000 people and going to bed alone. It's an interesting thought. I think some of us can resonate with that. We look at what the world has to offer if we do well enough, we can be famous and, and masses of people can love us and we can have lots of money and amazing trophies and climb mountains and learn all sorts of amazing skills and do great things. But in the end, if we have, don't have love, the scripture says, it's all worthless. It's all worthless. The thing you need most in your life is to not only love others, but to be loved and to really feel it, to bond deeply with others. And the only way that happens is when you are truly yourself and the people you're with are truly themselves. And when that happens, God brings together people in, in really terrific, amazing ways. God wants to offer you more emotional energy today. God wants to give you the fullness and life of his Holy Spirit today that, that you live every day in the midst of all your storms and everything with joy because you're connected deeply with 
your friends and your family. The biggest thing that gets in the way of us actually connecting with others is shame. Shame gets in the way. Not guilt, shame. Guilt is a good thing. Guilt says, guilt is outside your body, outside your identity. Guilt says, I'm a good person, I did a bad thing, right? That's not like me to shout at somebody. It's not like me to get drunk. It's not like me to whatever. The thing that you feel guilty about. And so you simply say, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to do it better. Shame says, of course I did that. Of course I made a mistake. I always do that. I'm never going to be better. I need to hide these things about myself. Because if people truly saw me, they'd reject me. So guilt says, I made a mistake. Shame says, I am a mistake. Guilt says, my actions are unworthy. Shame says, I am unworthy. And there's a big, big difference. Jesus Christ died on the cross not only to remove your sin, he died to remove your shame so that you could inherit the belovedness of being a son or daughter of God. So that you could live every day with confidence that in spite of your mistakes, God really does love you, he blesses you, he favors you, he calls you his own. That if you walk by faith, if you walk by faith, in the end your works will be good because they'll flow naturally out of the good things God is doing in your life. And so you don't have to be ashamed. Feel guilty sometimes, but never shame. Let that go. You are worthy of love and belonging. You are wanted by other people as you are. Believe it and your life will change. Shame takes on lots of masks and faces, but it's always the same thing. It's always saying, I'm not enough. Shame looks like busyness, constantly always doing something to prove myself. Shame looks like compiling trophies. Shame looks like always serving people even though nobody serves me and nobody notices. Shame can actually take the form of strictness. That's very common. Strict, rigid, legalistic people are usually some of the people who struggle with shame the most. They feel the most unworthy of belonging. Shame most commonly results in withdrawal, passivity, depression. Shame says, like, says something like, I can't tell that person they wounded me because then they'll leave me. Or I can't tell that person I'm angry because I'll hurt their feelings and that'll cause division between us. Shame says, I can't talk about how I feel. I can't say what I think. Shame says, I can't share an opinion because I don't want to push people away. Shame says, I can't say no, so I'm going to just avoid it altogether or say yes to everything. In all of these things are so bad for you. They're running you ragged. We need to let go of our fear of abandonment and embrace by faith the idea that God wants us and that there are people in our lives who want us and the people who don't want us will find no problem. Really, we need to get there. We need to get there. The problem is when we live by shame, always ashamed of this or that, we don't look... Un- a certain way, we haven't accomplished enough, we don't do enough or whatever, we don't have enough, we don't have a good enough reputation. The problem is that when we live from that place, that draws us into depression, into addiction, into sin, which then reinforces our shame and makes us more isolated than we ever were. So we gotta break that. And the way you break that is a good old Bible, old fashioned grace. It's all about the cross. Just trust in that. It's all about that. And you can be who you are. You're, all the skeletons in your closet, everything. You can be just exactly who you are. When you are vulnerable, you think you're going to push people away. When you're honest about your addictions, when you're honest about your feelings, when you're honest about your thoughts and your opinions, you're not going to push most people away. You're going to push some people away, but they're probably unhealthy anyway. You're gonna, what's mostly going to happen is you're going to draw people to you. Why? Because everyone feels safer around sinners. <laughs> everyone feels safer around people who are human. It's so much easier to talk to a drunk 
than it is a pastor. <laughs> it is. When you are vulnerable about your flaws and your mistakes, see, here's the thing. Everybody's a sinner. Some people are just more honest. And the people that are honest about their sins, and not just your sins, but honest about your fears, your doubts. You're honest about your weaknesses. Honest about your regrets. That doesn't push people away. It's telegraphing that I trust you. That's why I'm telling you this. And what usually happens is not only will people comfort you, they will be begin to open up their own hearts to you. I've never told anybody this before, but... And right there, some of the most important things happen in your life. Have you ever sat by a fire, and talked with an old friend, and it can feel like four hours fly by? Like, and you leave that conversation, even though it's three in the morning or something, you should be exhausted. You're going to bed somehow energized, alive. That word is called flow. It actually has a word for it. When you get into a groove with a good friend or your spouse or one of your kids, that energizes you. The opposite can happen too. Have you ever had a long, it's maybe a 15 minute conversation about the weather with somebody you care about, but it can feel like it goes forever. <laughs> and you leave exhausted. All of these things, again, are touching on our deepest need to bond with other people. When we meet with the people we love and we don't bond with them in some meaningful way, and we continue to not bond with people in certain ways, that relationship leaves us disappointed and therefore leaves us exhausted. We need to connect deeply with people. We need to be our true selves. We need to be seen deeply, and we need to see others deeply. And until that happens, we will not have the emotional energy to do what God has called us to do. We need to stop trying to be perfect. Christians are not perfect, right? not perfect. That's why we need Jesus. So today I want to convince you, do less, be more, and connect deeply with others. The scripture reading from today was John 15, one of the most famous passages in the Bible, one of Jesus, one of my favorite sermons for Jesus. If you've ever been on a spiritual retreat, very likely this one's going to come up. In John 15, Jesus says, I'll give you the abridged version. I could spend hours on this, literally, on every line, but it's essentially like this. Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are branches attached to me, the vine. As long as you're attached to me, everything's going to be okay. If you break from me and try and do things on your own, you will wither and die and you'll be cut from the vine. My father is the gardener, and he takes care of this vine, and he makes sure that every branch is cared for and that it bears fruit. You will bear fruit if you abide in me, if you stay connected to me. And as you are connected to me, you will receive everything you need to reach out and bear fruit. If you do what I command, you are abiding in me, and this is my command, love one another. If you love one another, you will be abiding in me. It's something like that. This, this passage is amazing. It is the whole, it is a perfect description of the inner life of Christ. We first begin, not by loving people, we begin by abiding in the vine. This word abiding, by the way, means to find your home in. It'd be like if you were, went up to the mountains and you were sledding. And you're, you, you know, you're out with your brothers and sisters or your friends or something. And you get in a snowball fight. It starts to snow. And you think, we've got to get back to the cabin. And you're getting back. And the snow's starting to pick up. And maybe you're feeling a little bit scared. And finally, you see the smoke on the horizon. There's the cabin. You're trudging through the snow. It's snowing. You come into the house. And there's hot chocolate. Grandma Pursley has made hot chocolate. <laughs> And you come in, and you come in, and it's warm, and it's safe, and you take that outer layer off, and then the best part, the best part is taking off the socks, because the socks don't come off, they peel off, you know? They're wet, so they, you know, they peel off. And you hang dripping, icy cold socks on the fire, and you put your kind of damp, you know, 
wrinkly feet up by the fire and just start warming them up. And you look outside and you see the storm raging and the wind blowing and the snow falling. But you are safe. You're comfortable. You're with the people you love. It may be snowing outside, but it's nice and warm in here. And there's something that the snow itself goes from being dangerous to something that's beautiful and even fun. Okay. That is a perfect description. We don't have this word in English, but that's a perfect description of this Greek word, meno. Our best translation is to abide. Abide. But it's so much richer than that. And Jesus says, do that in me. Abide in my love. Let my love be your cabin in the snow. John 15 doesn't say that, but I did. <laughs> and yeah, abide in me. Find a home in me. Be safe in me. And when you feel safe in my love, then instead of turning inward and crystallizing and holding on to everything, you're going to learn like branches on a vine to open up, to bloom, and to reach out. And you reaching out is you loving others as I have loved you. That's what it's all about. Being rooted in the vine, being safe in Jesus Christ, and finding the freedom to be messed up, broken, flawed individuals looking for love. That's what we are. So be there for people. Your relationships, your friends, and family are the most important thing in your life. So be there for people. The only way to be there for people is to give them time. Love is spelled T-I-M-E. The people who love you need your time. They need it. Don't give all your time to people you're not super close to. Don't give all your time to your job. Or your business even. You have to, have to lean into your friends and family. They're the most important thing. And the only way we're going to do that is if we stop being so lazy with the way we plan our lives. Let me get to that in a minute. C.S. Lewis said, only lazy people are busy. <laughs> I always love that quote. Only lazy people are busy. There's a big difference between being busy and being productive. Stop being so busy all the time. Unclutter your life. Leave large gaps in your life for nothing, including no TV, no anything. Just have big gaps in your life where you can be available to the people you love. You think in your busyness you're being productive. You're probably not 80% of the time. You may be familiar with this name, Vilfredo Pareto. Are you familiar with that? Pareto's Principle? You probably, Pareto's Principle is more commonly known the 80-20 Principle. He was a 19th century Italian economist who was measuring productivity. And he actually came across the strange thing. When he was gardening, he found that 80% of the peas in his garden were coming from 20% of the pea pods. And he found a ratio that he found very, very common in economics and in life in general. That... 20% of the input is responsible for 80% of the outcome. It's true in this church. Probably 20% of this church is responsible for 80% of the volunteering, right? 20% of an organization is usually responsible for 80% of the success, and so on and so forth. And sometimes this ratio is even more extreme. It can be 90-10%. It can be 99-1%. In your life, 20% of the work that you're doing is responsible for 80% of your success. That means that there's about probably 80% of your time that's probably not that productive. Most of the stuff we're doing isn't really producing or accomplishing much at all. And it's lazy to not take the time to analyze how we're wasting our time in busyness rather than spending our time doing things we love or in particular bonding with others. 80-20 principle. Tim Ferriss, who's not a Christian, he's a business person, but he said he realized that being busy is a form of laziness, lazy thinking, and indiscriminate action. He actually found in his vitamin business, before he wrote this famous book, that 80% of his clientele was only responsible for 20% of his business. So he just cut, 80, he like fired 80% of his customers. He's like, I'm just going to lean into the 20% that 
that are producing income. He said within six weeks, his business income quadrupled because he was leaning into those who were producing. I'm, I'm going off the reservation. The point is this. <laughs> you think you're being productive by working all hours of the night. You're not. And, you, and it's so good to let go of those things and lean into bonding deeply with others. You're like, well, I want to bond deeply, but what if people don't want to bond deeply with me? You just got to make a choice. Hannah was telling me that she, this was a need that she felt, and her brother, Nate, was like, one of the best relationships I ever had was when I got a prayer partner. So Hannah did that. She was telling me she got a prayer partner, and now like she and her prayer partner uh, are, are very, very tight. And, and it's all about that once a week, they just get together and they talk about, you know, when you pray, you're praying, you're talking about your needs. They just get together and they pray. And she says, it's been one of the most life-giving, awesome relationships. So you have to have this in your life if you want to have energy. So there's four things you need in order to bond. Number one, most important, you need to be vulnerable. I've said it like a million times today. Let me say it again. Being vulnerable means that you allow people to see deeper into your life. I remember in our small group, we were very surfacey, talking about the Bible, talking about this, what was going on. And one day the question came up, what is something that offends you most? And I was astonished that everyone in our small group had very different answers to the question, what offends you most? And by answering that, we were able to talk about the heart of some of our deepest woundedness. And it causes us to bond in incredible ways. By the way, small groups is starting next week. You should sign up for it if you want to bond deeply with others. So number one, be vulnerable. Allow people to see you deeply. Number two, don't resent the responsibility of relationships. Every relationship means there's more responsibility. Your life is like pigs at a trough. Every time a pig squeezes in, squeezes in another pig gets bumped out. It happens. It just happens. <laughs> you have to, and you can't resent it. You have to be okay with the fact that time is the currency of love. You love your job more than you love your friends and family. Your time is going to go to your job. So you, you cannot resent the fact that, you know, like when I became a boyfriend, I had more responsibilities. When I became a husband, etc., it this happened. So time is the currency of love. Number three, number three, be the first. Be the first to set up a date night. Be the first to call your friend to get together to go bowling or whatever it is you do. Be, be the first to say you're sorry. Um, keep being the first. I know a lot of you are saying, I'm always the first. Be the first to talk to your spouse about how you're always the first. <laughs> okay? Be vulnerable. Speak from your heart, and your life will change forever. And fourth and finally, believe you are wanted. Uh, believe you are wanted, just as you are. Believe that if you get angry, you're still wanted. Believe that if you share an opinion, you're still wanted. Believe that if you're not as attractive as you used to be, you're still wanted. Believe that even if you failed at your job or failed in your endeavors, you're still wanted. Believe that regardless of what you've done or what you have or what people say about you, you're still wanted. You are wanted. You're more than wanted. You're needed. People in your life, they need you. Believe it. Believe it with all your heart. You are worthy of love and belonging, not because of your accomplishments or because of your good behavior. You're worthy just as you are. Believe it with all your heart, and you will never be the same. Amen? Amen. I can't go without giving you an opportunity to connect with God. It's so hard to connect with people if you don't connect with God. And today, I want to convince you that it's a great day to become a Christian. I believe that becoming a Christian begins with an act of courage and it carries on with an act of courage. And that's why I think a tradition of standing up in front of a bunch of people is so important to becoming a believer. So if you want to become a Christian today, if you've fallen away in your faith and you want to come back to God, if you, don't, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to receive Christ, I want to invite you to do that today. The Bible says that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, that's all, that's all the Lord needs. Maybe you say only 1% of my life believes, 99% of my mind doesn't believe in God, but 1% does. That's all God needs 
to do a miracle in your life. So if there's anybody here today and you want to become a believer with every head up and everybody looking around, look at your neighbor and say, is this you? (laughs) I want to invite you to stand up and give me 30 seconds of your time to stand up and just come down here and let me pray for you. Just come on down. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Just come. Receive from God. He loves you. Friends, would you pray with me? And let's have the whole church. We're going to pray together. Let's all hold our hands out like this. This is a sign of receiving grace, a new life, and a new name. So would everyone, let's pray this together. Repeat after me. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Make me a new creation. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am blessed. I have your faith. And I trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your life will never be the same. But before you go, guys, go to this prayer room and we'll give you a book on how to live as Christ. And and, uh, we just want to connect with you guys. Give us a year of your life. Just attend church for a year of your life and you'll never be the same again. We love you so much. Just go this way. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. Love you guys. You're going to have an awesome, blessed, favored, amazing week. So leave with joy in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is moving in miraculous ways through Hour of Power, thanks to our faithful Eagle partners who provide the foundational support our ministry needs, we're able to continue sharing God's love and dignity with the world. Please prayerfully consider becoming an Eagle partner today with a monthly gift of $50 or a one-time gift of $600. As a thank you for your gift, Bobby will send you our recent book, Releasing Joy. This leather-bound 52-week devotional book features inspirational scripture and teachings from Bobby for every week of the year. As a Golden Eagle partner with your gift of $100 a month or a one-time gift of $1,200, Bobby will send you a copy of Releasing Joy with your name beautifully embossed on the cover. Your steadfast support enables our ministry to maintain and extend its reach around the world. Call, write, or go online to become an Eagle Partner today. We are so thankful for you.